God. They're going to hold up the truth. They're going to be standing on the foundation of God. They're going to be holding up the word of God. They're going to be rejoicing in the word of God. They're going to be standing for righteousness in Christ Jesus in 2022. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We need some pillows. Not no pillows. We need pillows. Thank you, Lord. In the household of God. That's going to stand for something. Thank you, Lord. If a man don't stand for something, he'll fall for anything. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ ain't called us to not stand for something. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We got to stand for the truth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You got to be part of the afflictions of Christ Jesus. You got to be ready for the persecution that comes with standing for the truth. You got to be, thank you, Lord, ready for the, the backbiting and the slander that comes with standing for the truth. Thank you, Lord. You got to be ready for all the, the game saying and the put down. Thank you, Lord, that comes with standing for Christ Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. You got to be partaker of the afflictions of being in the law. Thank you, Lord, because everybody not going to be having a mind that they're ready to run for the law. Thank you, Jesus. They ain't going to despise those that standing for Jesus Christ. Man, Jesus Christ said a man's soul to be from his own household. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bring things together. He said, may I come to bring a soul. He said, I come to divide the sister-in-law from the father-in-law. I come to divide the mother from the daddy. Thank you, Lord. The son from the mom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He said, you think I come to bring peace? He said, may I come to bring a soul. Oh, Lord, I'm talking about really standing for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. When you're standing on God's word like you're supposed to, thank you, Lord. Then the word is going to be inside of you, and you're going to start to bring forth a certain fruit that you ain't going to find in this world. Thank you, Lord. You're going to start to bring forth a certain fruit that this world is going to possess. Jesus Christ said, I'm the true vine, and ye are the branches. Abide me and I and you, for the branches cannot bring forth fruit of their own self. And when you win Jesus Christ, you're going to start to see a fruit on them branches that you just ain't going to find in this world. I'm talking about love is going to be on those branches. Patience is going to be on those branches. Thank you, Lord. Joy is going to be on those branches. Kindness is going to be on those branches. Thank you, Lord. I'm talking about the fruit of the Spirit is going to be on those branches. Thank you, Lord. I'm talking about the real thing. I'm talking about the real Holy Ghost that's going to be manifested inside of you. Thank you, Lord. When you're really living for the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ said, if any man loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him. And we will come and make our abode with him. The Bible says, know ye not that ye are the temple of the Spirit of the living God. And the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you worthy. Lord.
persecuting him, who was with the afflictions that was going on outside of him. He said, that which coming upon me all the time was the care for the people of God. And when you love God like you're supposed to, you're going to love his people. Come on now, you're going to love God's people. Ain't no such thing as serving Jesus Christ, but not loving Jesus Christ's people. When Paul was on the road to the Damascus, persecuting them saints, the Bible said there came a light shining from heaven round about. They already blinded this man. And this man fell down to the earth. And when he was in the midst of persecuting God's people, Jesus Christ said, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? He wasn't persecuting Jesus Christ himself, but he was persecuting Jesus Christ's people. And that was the same thing as persecuting Jesus Christ himself. Glory to God. So when you really say you love Jesus, you're going to love God's people. And it ain't no if, and the buts about it. This is how it's going to be. Thank God we ain't making no excuse for not loving God's people. Now if you don't love God's people, you're on your way to the lake of fire. You ain't going where you think you're going when you pass out this life. Glory to God. This Bible said, thank you Lord, that Cain slew his brother. And what for did he slay him? Thank you Lord, because his own works was evil and his brother was righteous. Come on now. Jealousy is not in the kingdom of God. I say envy and strife is not in the kingdom of God. Thank you Lord. Murder is not in the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. I'm talking about having unfeigned love for your brother and your sister. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, man. Lukewarm love is not going to cut it. Thank you, Lord. God said that lukewarm backseat love is not going to cut it. Ain't no excuse. See, Peter came to Jesus Christ and said, Lord, how many times did I forgive my brother? Seven times seven? And Jesus Christ cranked that thing up, did he? He turned that thing up a notch, didn't he? He said, yes, yeah, 70 times 7. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So we ain't going along with King Saul. And we ain't going along with Pharaoh. And we ain't going along with Cain. Because they are not in the kingdom of God. The Bible said the law and the prophets was unto John. And since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. And every man got to press this way into it. Try to press into the kingdom of God and seek out for the Holy Ghost. You got to lay down that old man. You got to lay down the murder and the backbite and the slander and the discord and the envy and the strife and the respect of person. You got to lay it down when you're talking about you seeking God and you're trying to get baptized by His Spirit. Come on now. I was going to baptize you and you were murdered. Come on now, you got murder in your heart towards your neighbor and towards your brother, but you're seeking the Holy Ghost. You can't get it that way. The Bible said repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the washing away of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. After you repent, after you repent, you got to turn away from that murderous heart, from that whoremonger and adulterous heart. Your love got to be right. You got to obey the word of God. You got to look at what Jesus said, and that's how I want to be. That's who I want to be. When you read this Bible and it say, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And you start reading all these good, everlasting word of God that Jesus Christ put forth. You got to put it in your mind that I'm going to obey it no matter what the devil got to say. Thank you, Lord. No matter what the devil got to say, I'm going to obey this word. And the first one going to try to tell you that you're crazy is your kinfolk. It's going to be your best friend. They're going to tell you, oh, you're talking about getting married, but you've been a player all your life. 
no more. We want to find out we are getting paid. Thank the Lord to bear the third job. Thank you, Jesus. And then you're going on in the Lord and you say, oh, I'm singing the Lord, but I got, I got this pistol here. And I've been told this pistol since I was 16. But Jesus Christ told Peter, put thy sword back until I see me that live by the sword, going to die by it. And no matter I have eternal life. So I had to get rid of my pistol. I had to sell my shotgun as I was seeking the Holy Ghost. As I was pressing into the kingdom of God. It's a certain thing that you got to lay down when you talk about seeking the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. And you find out that all this cursing, that that lifestyle you were living in the world when you were cursing everybody out. When you was ready to fight everybody. And you had a spirit of anger on you. You come to find out, thank you, Lord, you had to lay that down. Because the Bible says, thank you, Lord, wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and all evil speaking and hypocrisy as newborn babes desire to sit still feel for the word that you may go thereby. So you find out, you got to lay that evil speaking down. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You talk about seeking the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. So you stop cursing. And you sell your pistol. And you get rid of all the women and you get married. And you settle down. Then you start praying and you start pressing. You find you a secret place with God. And you start to press and pray and call on the mighty name of Jesus. Until the Lord come and rain rightly upon your soul. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high set abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So you got to go find you a secret place and start calling on the name of Jesus. For the Lord said, He that sins in secret shall reward thee openly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And this ain't grievous to us because we the saints of God and we love righteousness. And we love joy. And we love the truth. And this ain't grievous us to us. You know what We love righteousness. We love love. We love kindness. We love hospitality. The Bible says it's commandments are not grievous. Come on now. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And you got to keep seeking. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible said, Jesus Christ said, tell you in Jerusalem. Until you're being due with power from on high. So you might have to tear a little bit. And you might have to wait on the Lord. Because the Bible said, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have even entered into the mind of a man, the thing that God has prepared for them, for them that love him. But what place say for them that wait on him? So you talking about waiting on him, thank the Lord, you're going to wait on your love. And he ain't gonna come and put something on you, thank the Lord, that you ain't gonna never forget. Thank you, Jesus, thank the Lord. And I'm not talking about something that you're gonna leave here. I'm talking about something you're gonna be able to take to the next life. And the last life. Because Jesus Christ says, store your treasures up in heaven. Thank the Lord, for wherever your treasures is, that way your heart gonna be also. And bought the rust can't enter in and corrupt. And the thief can't break in and steal. We talk about something everlasting that you can take with you to the third heaven. To the third heaven. To the third heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Go on and on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Let's go over here. We're going to 1 Peter chapter 2. And we'll talk about it just a little bit. See, God is love. Thank you, Lord, and we don't leave out the, 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 the truth. And we don't just have the truth and we don't leave out the love. Because the Bible said that grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Not just the love, not just the truth. But with grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. You got to have them both. Because if you have a whole bunch of truth with no love, then you can't edify nobody. Because the Bible says that not is public love, but charity and edify. Thank you, Lord. You can't help nobody if you ain't got no love for them. I don't care.
care how much knowledge you possess. And you don't want to have a whole bunch of love, but you don't got no truth. And then you find yourself loving everything that's going on in this world. But you ain't got no truth to stand on and be able to correct the soul and allow them to teach them the ways of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Man, we got to have the truth and we got to have love. Because these things work together for the good of the saints in the church. And thank you, Lord, by the love that people see in the world, they're going to know that we are his disciples. Thank you, Lord. Not by how long your shirt is. Not by how long your skirt is. Not by how many scriptures you can quote. Thank you, Lord. May you gonna thank you, Lord. They're gonna see and know that you are Jesus Christ, the Son of How much love that we have for one another. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For how much love we have for one another. Thank you, Lord. And when you have this love inside of you. They are gonna manifest. Yeah, huh? They are man. People are gonna see it and they're gonna rejoice yeah. and say, "I ain't never felt this kind of love before." Yeah, Thank you, Lord. You ain't gonna find this love outside of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, you are not gonna find it outside of the Lord. Yeah, if you can find this love outside of the Lord, what you need the Lord for? Yeah, Thank you, but you need Jesus Christ in your life because you have not known it this love. The Bible says all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor thyself. Thank you, Jesus. If you ain't got no love, then you ain't fulfilling no law. And then we know where you're sitting at. Thank you, Lord. You ain't got no love, thank you, Lord, and you ain't fulfilled the law yet. Because the law is fulfilled in love. Don't you know, thank you, Lord, you put enough love on, then you know that you ain't got, got no business lying on your neighbor. You put enough love in your heart, then you're not going to have a mind that you're going to cover after the thing that he possesses. Because the love of God is going to be shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. And you're going to be able to fulfill the righteousness and that is of the law through the love that God put inside of your soul. You say, I write my laws in their heart. And my laws in their mind. We don't need no tables of stone no more. Amen. We're not found after no Ten Commandments. Amen. We find out the faith that is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I will call them Ten Commandments, the administration of death. Right. Written and engraved in stone, it was glorious. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. But not no more. We got the real thing. The real thing. I don't need no touch table of stone no more. Thank you, Lord. You got the love of God inside of your heart. What I need to take a man is for. The Bible says the law is not even meant for a righteous man. But for the sinners and the ungod. Come on for the disobedient. Come on now for extortions, for murders. They got to look at that and read that and try to line up according to that. But when you press into the kingdom of God and you be baptized in the Holy Ghost and you start walking by faith and following the Spirit of God, you're not going to be transgressing against no Ten Commandments. Come on now. Thank the Lord. We don't need no Ten Commandments. We ain't carrying the Mount Sinai. This Bible said you didn't came, thank you, Lord, to Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, and to the heavenly Jerusalem. Come on now. A heavenly Jerusalem. And to a place of just men made perfect. Thank you, Lord. First Peter 2 and 1. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Once again, for these elders, thank you, Lord, like I said, for being examples. Being examples of love and of unity. Because everybody don't have a mind that they want to be unified in love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, I done been around. Thank you, not everybody have a mind. Thank you, Jesus. Where they willing to love like they're supposed to. Thank you, like 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 the Bible say, ain't no big eyes and little U's in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You find out that you are part of the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord. The eye cannot say to the foot, I have no need of peace. Thank you, Lord. And I need these brothers here. Thank you, Lord. And without any doubt, if they, I feel like the same way, we got a little girl, they feel like they need me in such a way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I need what God did. And I want to know everything God showed them. So I said, I want to know everything God showed them because it'll be able to help me along the way. Ain't no make 
no sense me to say I got it all together. This Bible says if a man thinking he knowing everything, he knows not what he ought to know. He don't know better than what he should know. Thank you, Jesus. All right, First Peter two and one. Thank you, Lord. Wherefore laying aside all madness. So madness got to be gone out of our home. Madness is talking about ill intention. Ill will. I did this for the purpose to, 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 to do something bad to somebody. Man, it got to be gone out of our heart when we talk about we following Jesus Christ. Especially when we going out talking about we the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It ain't nobody else like us. Well, man, it's got to be gone. Thank you, Lord. Man, this stuff got to be out your heart. Thank you, Jesus. When we going for telling people that we the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, man, they looking for something different from all the rest of these churches out here. Glory to God, thank you, Jesus. Man, we going for telling people we the one. Thank you, Lord. And we can't stop backbiting one another. And we can't stop slandering one another. And you got beef with the church around the corner. And you got issues with the church up the street. They trying to lay that stuff down. Thank you, Jesus. Laying aside all malice, ill intention. Thank you, Lord. What else we laying aside, brother? And all God, we laying that aside too. Yeah. And I ain't got no problem laying this stuff off. Because I know that when I lay it off, it's going to cause me to get closer yeah. to Jesus. Yeah. It's going to cause me to get closer to my Lord. Yeah. That I say that I love. Yeah. Okay? Yes, right. And hypocrisy. And hypocrisy. Thank Lord, and God ain't got nobody in the church hypocrite. Thank yeah. Lord, man, you got to repent of all your sins. Yeah. I can't be no gospel preacher, truth speaking hypocrite. I'll be up here condemning my own self. Thank God if I'm going to preach on love, I better be able to show forth good. If I'm going to preach on righteousness, then I got to be walking in righteousness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Telling you what you need to do and I'm doing the opposite. That's a hypocrite. This Bible say that a hypocrite will not stand before God. Thank you, Jesus. Hypocrite. Thank you. The Bible says what the scribes and Pharisees were putting for was hip hypocrisy. Right. That we don't want to be no hypocrites. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Man, because you be seeking Lord and crying out to God and looking for a blessing, then you wonder why you can't get your blessing. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, because you're in the church, hypocrite. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. You be in the church, drunk and shouting and praying to God, you go home, you ain't living like you're supposed to live. Thank you, Lord. You wonder why you can't get your blessing like you're looking out. Thank you, Lord, because we ain't no Sunday worshipers. We don't worship God only on Sunday. Jesus Christ said, pick up your cross and follow me daily. Thank you, Lord. So we pick up our cross every day and we follow Jesus. Thank you, Lord, we'll be here Saturday night, too. Thank you, Lord, Saturday night, too. And the Lord will be Thursday night. And the Lord will be Tuesday night. Lord, be Tuesday night. We might be on prayer on Monday, on Wednesday. On Friday, every day belongs to the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. <laughs> every day, every day. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So we ain't playing church. We ain't playing church high. Thank you, Lord. We talking about living this thing here. Thank you, Jesus. We not playing around. Thank you for God, because God is looking for somebody that's sincere yes. and going to be real with him. Yes. The Bible said that God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. And when you serve God like that, you're going to live something. Yes. Talk about living something. Yes. And what else we laying aside, yes. Brother Johnson? And envy. We laying envy aside too. Amen. All right, go ahead. And all evil speaking. Yes, all evil speaking. Yes. What about praying for your enemy? Oh, yes. What about praying for the one thing Lord, that curse you out? The one that wish harm and death upon you. Can you pray for them? Yes. But that is what God is looking for us to be able to do. Yes. That's what Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Master. He commanded us to pray for our enemies and them that despitefully use us. Okay, go ahead. As newborn babes, 
newborn babes. And newborn babies. Desire the sensitive milk of the word. Desire the sensitive milk of the word. And then when you desire the word like you're supposed to, and you start, thank you, Lord, reading the word of God, and you start eating the word of God, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. The Bible says, the ill tried word as the mouth tasted meat. And you start designing the sensitive milk of the word, and this word, you start eating it, it causes you to grow. It causes you to increase in your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. The Bible says, a sower went out to sow a seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. Some fell upon stony ground. Some fell upon thorns. And some fell upon good ground. And they that was upon good ground were those out of an honest and a sincere heart that heard the word and kept the word and brought forth fruit with patience. So the word is going to cause you to grow. So after a while, God is going to be looking and seeing, thank you, Lord, how much growth you done put in your life. Because he knows that his word is not going out and returning to him, Lord. God is looking for something to grow inside of you. See, Jesus Christ said, if a man ain't bringing forth no fruit, he is cast forth as a withered branch. And men gather these branches and do what with them? He throw them in a fire. That's all they good for. So we don't want to be no withered branch. We want to be obedient to the word of God. Thank the Lord where we start bringing forth fruit. Because Jesus Christ said, herein is my Father glorified that you bring forth much fruit. Come on now. They have the wild God and thank you looking for a change to come in your life. Thank you you looking for a change, looking for something to change up. Thank you looking for that old man to start fading off the scene. Thank you looking for a new creature to start coming about. Thank you looking for a man that's full of love and joy got to start coming in your life. Thank you a man full of peace and honor. Thank you a thing a mannerable man. Thank you not a disrespectful man. Not an angry man. Thank you we have more best to be done away with. And we start coming to the Lord. As newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Thank you, Lord. If so be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And we have. That's why we love and why we fell in love with him. Thank you, Lord, because he gave us some bread. Thank you, Lord, that we took a little piece of that bread. And it tastes so good. Yeah, we are. And so we came back for some more. And we kept coming back for more. And we kept coming back for more. He said, I am that bread of life. He said, no father did eat man in the wilderness and all dead. He said, but my father giving you the true bread that coming down from heaven. That if a man eat thereof, he shall not die, but have everlasting life. The true bread from heaven. Thank you, gave us a piece of bread that it tastes so good. We had to come back and get some more. <laughs> oh, no. We had to come back and get some more to bring. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. No. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. What did it say? To whom coming? As unto a living stone. As unto a living stone. Not no dead stone now. Right. Right. A living stone. Yes. Disallowed of thee of men. That means rejected of men. Oh, but chosen of God. But God chose. Yeah. And precious. Yes, he he, he, you got to feel this way about Jesus. Yeah. I always say you got to feel they precious to you. Yeah. Precious Jesus. Yeah. And when something is precious to you, you not going to let it go. Thank you, Lord, the devil wanted to fight you for this one. <laughs> the devil wanted to fight you for this one. You're not going to let this go easily. When something is better than you, you're going to hold on to it for dear life. Precious Jesus. And precious. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And not only was Jesus a living stone, he said, ye also as lively stone. So you can't be no dead stone yourself. You got to be on fire for God. You got to be a living stone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's going to show forth the praises of God. Thank you, Lord. 
And since you are a stone, what about this stone here? Built up a spiritual house. You are built up a spiritual house. Yes, yes. Holy priesthood. Wait a minute, this is Peter right here. Yeah. But Paul talked about this same thing over there in Ephesians, didn't he? Yeah. When he says that you're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Yes, right. And Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Yes. Whom all the building fitly framed together. He was talking about no natural building. He was talking about them lively stones. He was talking about them souls that were called according to God's purpose. Thank you, Lord. He said, I take you one of the city and two of a family and bring you on the vine and teach you of his ways. He said, I'll give you pastors according to his heart. And they going to feed you with no crap
Like, we ain't no Jehovah Witnesses. No. We Jesus' name witness. Yeah. Jesus Christ ain't never said you gonna be witnesses of Jehovah no. and, and, and in Judea yeah. and in Samaria yeah. and in the uttermost parts of the earth. No. He said you gonna be witnesses of me yeah. in Judea yeah. and in Samaria and in the uttermost parts of the earth. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to get I'm coming to tell you about Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And I don't need a pamphlet neither. Thank you, Lord. I got this word here. I don't need another book. Anytime you need another book, you're trying to add from the faith. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be that fire the righteousness. Be that seek the law. Come on now. I don't need another book. I got the book right here. That's it. All right. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion. Behold, I lay in Zion. A cheap cornerstone. A cheap cornerstone. Elect, precious. Elect and precious. He that believeth on him. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Thank you, Lord. Now, the Bible says you build upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. That's right. And Jesus Christ himself being a chief cornerstone. Right. So I always put this forward. Thank you, Lord. Whatever you say you're standing on, thank you, Lord, it has to line up with that chief cornerstone. Amen. When a man go to build a house, he lay that first brick there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the rest of the bricks have to line up with that first brick. That's right. Thank you, Lord. You don't see them bricks start to go off. And then next thing you know, the house be all messed up. But that first brick be laid, and it be a solid brick right there. And the rest of them bricks that come after that, thank you, Lord, got to line up with that first brick. Thank you, Jesus. The same way the doctrine that you're standing on has to line up with the doctrine of the apostles and prophets, because they were taught by the chief cornerstone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He put, thank you, he told in the pot, he told Peter, he said, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So Peter couldn't come preaching another gospel. No, Paul couldn't come preaching something contrary to what the 12 first had. No, thank you, man, everything got to line up. Amen. Because God is not the author of confusion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's where all these strange doctrines come from. Yeah. When man starts to exalt themselves above the law. Yeah. And they feel like they doctrine what they what they feel like they done shown or what they got and they can overrule what Jesus said. Yeah. And that's what starts causing all kind of confusion. And people start fighting, warring against one another. Thank you, Lord. But when it's time for us to establish sound doctrine, we opened up this word here. Thank you, Lord. Because the Bible says all things of scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for correction, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Unto every good work. Thank you, Jesus. So we got to be able to get in this word here if there be any differences. Amen. And you can't be scared to sit down with another brother and say, well, let's see what God said about it. See, the only people scared to sit down the people that got their own agenda going on. Right. Man, you got your own doctrine you preaching. You got your own thing you want to put forth. And you don't care about the will of God. But see, us sensitive brothers, we know that salvation don't come no other way, and we don't want to err from the truth. So sometimes we might have to sit down with each other, thank Lord, that we can get this thing lined up right. Thank you, Jesus, because thank you, people's souls is at stake. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. People's souls is on the line. Thank you, so we got to humble ourselves to one another. That's one of the major things. People don't want to humble themselves to one another. Thank you, Lord. People think they're bigger than the one, and he's not worthy to sit down with me and talk with me about what I'm preaching. Come on, now. You got to humble yourself. Thank you, Jesus, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Thank you, Lord. There ain't nobody bigger than nobody. They got a policy, man. Who is Paul? Who is Apollo? But ministers, by whom you believe, even as God gave to every man. There's one man plant, the one man water, but it's God to get an increase. Come on now. This God devil. Respect the person devil. Come on now. Come on now. I said this God devil. Respect the person. He's really an anti-Christ devil. 
because Christ is not divided. No. And anything coming against the unity of the saints is an anti-Christ spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Anti-Christ spirit. Thank you, Lord. I don't want the people to dwell together in unity. When Isaiah, thank you, Lord, 133 said how good and pleasant it is for the brother to dwell together in unity. He says like the ointment that ran down every head. When, when he was anointed as a high priest and the oil dripped down on his beard. He says like the dew on top of Mount Hermon. Even on top of Mount Zion. Come on now. How good and pleasant it is for the brother to dwell together in unity. But the devil don't want that. Y'all know the devil don't want that. Because they're strength in numbers. And the devil trying to keep people divided. Thank you, Lord, because he knows that he can pick them off one by one. While they out there by themselves. They thinking they can do it on their own. He can see them too. And he starts picking them off. And you start to see one of them fall over here. And one of them fall over there. Thank you, Lord. But Jesus Christ said, there are two or three of God together in my name. There I am in the midst. And the Bible says, if they are two should lie together, they should have heat. And a three-fold cord is not easy and broken. So when you're with your brother, thank you, Lord. The Bible says, Jesus Christ sent them out by two. When you're with your brother, thank you, Lord. Your brother can watch your back and make sure the devil ain't breaking you down. Thank you, Lord. And when you're walking with your brother, your brother can look over your shoulder and watch and see if the enemy comes. I'm talking about the unity of the people of God. Thank you, Lord. We ain't going along with it. Get started in division. Thank you, Lord. Man, Jesus Christ said, My kingdom is not divided. Thank you, Jesus. Glory for that pride and arrogance keep all kind of people stuck right there. Thank you, the devil can come and toss them and do all kind of different things to them. And you come and see them a few years later and they got a whole nother spirit on them. Because they allow the devil to get them out there alone, thinking that they can do this by themselves. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I'm not afraid to come fellowship, my brother. I'm not afraid to come and sit up under the elders and see what kind of edifying they can bring into my life, into my soul. A lot of people don't even got to mind that they want to come out and fellowship and love. Just ain't in them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Then you can't let the devil take that out of your heart. The Bible says, man, a root of bitterness spring up well by men and be defiled. Because a root of bitterness spring up in your heart, you just be defiled. Thank you, Lord. You can't bring forth the fruit of love like you're supposed to. Then how you going to be a preacher? How you going to edify somebody without love? How you going to uh, put that unity out there? Thank you, Lord. When you ain't got the fruit, you can't sow the seed. You ain't got the fruit, you can't sow the seed. Thank God, you ain't got peace. How you gonna make peace? You ain't got love. How you gonna sow love? You ain't got patience and kindness. How you gonna tell somebody else they need to have? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And God, you gotta let the word of God work mighty in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you're gonna be all alone while Jesus is working on you. Be all by yourself. And God will be working on you mighty, just you and the word. Sometimes that's all it needs to be, you and the word. Thank you, Lord. All right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I pray to say, man, the fruit of peace is sown in them that make peace. So you can't sow peace if you don't make peace. You ain't got the fruit, you definitely don't got the seed. Right now, I'm going to say that the earth brings forth grass, and the earth yields its seed, and the fruit tree yields fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. So you got to have that fruit to be able to sow that seed. So you see discord, you better believe, they're going to be sowing discord. If they saw them more this God and they fruit, watch it. They don't saw it because they got the seed too. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ said you should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We've been set free because we made up with obedience to the truth. And we didn't care about what this world had to say. We didn't care about what friends and family had to say. 
We had to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jimmy. The whole world backing up on God. They took the commandments out the judge, the courthouse. They took the prayer out of the school. Thank you, Lord. I don't want you to talk about Jesus too much in public. People's faces turning up at you. You don't see where this nation is going? That's right. Thank you, Lord. Contrary against God. And the Bible say the nation that forsake the Lord shall utterly perish. Thank you, Lord. In one place, man, Jesus Christ said, all of them that hate me love death. Thank you, Lord. People fall in love with death. Fall in love with sin. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mama don't know how to raise their daughters no more and their children no more. Just all morals just went out the window. Thank you, Lord. Man, the Bible said, all we like sheep have gone astray. Every man to his own way. But Peter said, now nah, you to turn back into the bishop and shepherd of your soul. People thinking they can do it on their own. Thank you, Lord. Turning all kind of strange dogs. People heart, mind, somebody. They, they, uh, they Egyptians now. Uh oh. People got all kind of Egyptians. We, we, we Egyptians, we used to be kings. Uh -huh. All this foods. Thank you, Lord. Talk about you come from Egypt. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, man. You better ask that Pharaoh what happened to him. Go yeah. on, yeah. Pharaoh no better. Don't y'all know Pharaoh no better? Yeah. He know better than us. Yeah. He know better. He didn't know then, but he know. Go on. Everybody turning to these strange gods. Yeah. Yeah. You better serve the true living God. Thank you, Lord. There ain't but one God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One God in this Bible. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Go ahead, brother. Thank you, Lord. Uh, okay. Uh, unto you, therefore, which believe he is perfect. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious. precious. Yeah, but unto them which be disobedient. But unto them which be disobedient. The stone which the builder disallowed. The stone which the builder disallowed. The same as made the head of the corner. The same as made the head of the corner. So it's not just talking about the scribes and Pharisees that rejected Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You if you reject Jesus Christ and be disobedient and be the same boat as them scribes and Pharisees in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible said that Peter told him that. Have you not read it? The stone was the builder rejected. The same has become the head of the corner. He told Caiaphas and them that, didn't he? And the high priest, he told them that. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. But Peter just put forth over here. He said, if you be disobedient, you'll be the same boat that they was in. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Okay. A stone of stumbling. A stone of stumbling. A rock of offense. A rock of offense. Even unto them which stumble at the word. Even unto them which stumble at the word. Being disobedient, whereunto they were appointed. Being disobedient, whereunto they were appointed. Amen. Oh Lord Jesus. But ye are a chosen generation. But ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Yeah. A royal. What about this chosen generation? Uh -huh. What about everybody that's sitting in here right now? Can you consider all the people in your family that were never called? You consider the generations before you that ain't never learned about baptism in Jesus' name. Never knew that there was a Holy Ghost. Never knew the truth in Jesus Christ. All the generations before you that ain't never heard the truth, the true word of God. But it's something about you that God called you and God allowed you to hear the true word of God. And we got family members that don't even want to hear this here. We got kin folk and ones we really love. They don't even want to hear this here. Thank God, but what about you? What made you so special that you had a soft and tender heart that when the word of God came, you were going to humble yourself. The Bible said the day you hear his voice, heart is not your heart. Had to be so special about you. The Bible said, Jesus Christ said, no man can come unto me except the Father draw him to me. So it had to be something about you. Yeah. Thank God that you were going to be able to hit on God's word and be obedient to it. Yeah. 
and not be proud and say, I don't need that. I don't want that. All I need is money in this life. Oh, I got my girl, I got my joy. That's all I need. That's all I don't feel. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But what about us? A chosen generation. Well, God called us and we weren't afraid to pick up the phone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you, Lord, to be called and chosen of God. And the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. So a lot of people get a call. But how many of them going to answer? How many of them going to look around and say, I see all this going on around me, but I'd rather serve the Lord. Don't y'all know, man, peer pressure is real? People can't come to church because they're afraid of what their friends might say. People scared to put up their pants on their way because everybody around them sagging. Come on now. Thank you, Lord. Certain people scared to live holy now because everybody around them living unholy. So they scared to stand out from society. They scared that they might look different and be talked about. But the Bible says you are peculiar to people anyway. We coming up on it. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Go ahead. Go ahead and we can read it again. Okay. <laughs> but ye are a chosen generation. But ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A holy nation. A peculiar people. A peculiar people. That's a different kind of people, like. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So it's already ordained that when you come to Jesus Christ, you're gonna stand out. Amen. You're gonna look different. Yeah. Think about it, you're not gonna look like the rest of the world. Because the fashions of this world perish. Thank you, Lord. But he that doeth the will of God shall abide well. Amen. And so we're going to look different because we got to be a light unto the world. Right. Jesus Christ said, You are a light unto the world. A city that's set on a hill shall not be hid, cannot be hid. Right. And Jesus Christ also said, I'm the light of the world. Yes, and he that followed after me shall not walk in darkness. Amen. And so when we follow when the Lord, we're not walking in darkness no more. We're going to start standing out from the rest of the world that's still in darkness. Yeah. And so we can't be ashamed that we done came to his marvelous life. Yeah. Because the rest of the world is not ashamed to be rolling up weed in the parking lot and everybody smelling it. In the club drunk, doing a dance, and everybody looking at them fumbling and stumbling left and right. Yeah. They ain't ashamed of that. People cursing and using profanity in front of you and your children. And they got no shame about this here. Thank you, Lord. And you're going to be ashamed to wear the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You cannot be ashamed to be walking in this generation living a righteous lifestyle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus Christ said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you in front of my father. You deny me in front of everybody else. I deny you in front of my father. Thank you, Lord. So we pick our head up. Yeah. And we, thank you, Lord, put the name of Jesus on. We put righteousness on. Thank you, Lord, we walk proud in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're not ashamed of Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because this world got to see somebody living something. Yeah. Amen. This world got to see a light shining from somewhere. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Man, young men going out there in the street, and they looking like this and looking like that. They got to see somebody that's living something different from what they've been taught. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Likewise, these young women, they got to see something different uh -huh. from what they've been taught yeah. or what the radio teaching them yeah. or what their favorite rap out there are talking about. Yeah. They got to see something different. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. The Bible said, let your light so shine amongst men uh -huh. that they may see your good works yeah. and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. He said that he was going to make them trees of righteousness, yeah. a planting of the law. That he might be glorified. Thank it all a righteous tree. A holy tree. Thank it all. That's what God want to make us so that we can let our light shine and show this world that there is hope. That there is salvation. Thank God that God still got a plan for you. And you don't have to die that way in your sins. You don't have to die and pass out this life as a drunkard, as a pothead, as a murderer. As a whoremonger, as a prostitute, yeah. thank you, Lord, as a liar, as a thief, you don't have to die that way. Thank you, Lord, we understand that there's salvation in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Okay. This world got to see something. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. One, one scripture I read is say, day without us should not be made perfect. Thank you, Lord. I know it could be talking about something else, but that's a good scripture to use to get you an understanding. And these people, if you don't live nothing, they not going to see nothing. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Lord. If you ain't living nothing, they ain't seeing nothing. That's right. Thank you, Lord. If you look warm, thank you, Lord. If they ain't seeing look warm, they think that's how it's supposed to be. Thank you, Lord. You backslid, thank you, Lord. You run up on them, and all you want to do is talk about NBA game and this and that. Then they're going to sit down and talk with you about that. Because they're not going to want to talk about Jesus. They want you to come on down, thank you, Lord, and come down on their level and talk to them about LeBron James. Thank you, Lord. But ain't no salvation in LeBron James. I want you to talk about this favorite rapper, this new song that came out. That's going to be old next month. New song come out, everybody there's going to be old next year. And the devil bring a new one out. And they learn it from the beginning to the end, and it be old next year. They don't even sing it no more. You might want to open up your Bible and remember one of these scriptures that's going to last forever. That I'll be able to establish you forever. And it don't never get old. They don't never get old. Thank you, Lord. People learn these rap songs from the first song all the way to the end. I know about it because I did it myself. Thank you, Lord. I know you know these rap songs all the way to the end. I'm still, thank you, Lord, trying to uh, learn some church songs now. Thank you, Lord. Whole memory downloaded rap songs. I done got that stuff out of my head. I'm trying to learn some church songs now. Thank you, Lord. I've been sitting there listening to these songs. I'm trying to remember some of these songs. So I can sing them when I'm at work and in my car and stuff. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've seen some songs to the Lord. My whole life listening to murder this one, kill this one, rob this one, sleep around with this one. And I listened to this stuff when I was eight years old and it corrupted me when I grew up. I became a straight, a straight sinner. Thank you, Lord. Listen to this rap stuff all day long. Eight, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And after a while, thank you, Lord, when I turned 18, 19 years old, I was a murderer myself. Ready to kill somebody. Thank you, Lord. I mean, really had a mind. I was ready to kill somebody. Well, this is what you get when you got your child sitting in the car with you and you riding around listening to this stuff all day. And your child is listening and you think these kids ain't listening, but these kids, that's all they do is listen. Thank you, Lord. And you wonder why they killing each other at 12 years old. Look what you been letting them listen to since they was born. Wonder why they selling drugs. They are at 11 and 12. Well, that's all they know. That's all they been listening to since they was a kid. Thank you, Lord. Trying to put some word in these babies' ears. Yeah. Trying to put the word of God in these babies' life. Thank you, Lord. The Bible said, train up a child in the way that she goes. And when they get old, they will not depart from it. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That's going to hold you up. Yeah. And the devil know what he's doing. Yeah. Thank you, the devil know what he's doing. Yeah. Thank the world just don't know what's going on. But the devil know. Yeah. And we not even going to save the vices, so we know too. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And you wonder why, like Brother just said, thank you, Lord. Young men going to jail at a rate that's unfathomable. You can't even imagine. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, the rate that people going to jail. Yeah. And I ain't talking about no little time. I'm talking about 20, 30, 40 years, whole life gone. Yeah. 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 And they don't go to jail, they're getting shot and gunned down by somebody else right. in the neighborhood. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, because they done took heed to the devil's doctrine. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Right. Oh, Lord, so worthy, Jesus. All right, now. Thank you. I read one way in the book of Proverbs that says, Cease, my son, from hearing the instruction that's causing you to err from the ways of truth. That's right. Or the ways of life. Yeah. He says, Cease. That means stop. stop. Yeah. That means turn that stuff off. 
Because it ain't doing nobody no good. After a while, you got to sit back and really examine yourself to see what you in. Is it doing you any good? You got to sit back. You got to examine. Well, I've been listening to this all the years. Is, is this helping me in it? And if it ain't helping you better yourself in your life, at least cornerly, you better leave it alone. Now, we know Jesus Christ is able to save us to the uttermost. Naturally, spiritually, everlasting life. He got all of it. But I'm just saying, people have to examine their corner like they natural life and see what they're doing in the dark. If you're drinking alcohol and you see it messing your marriage up and causing you to be abusive to your wife and mistreat your children and cut them out, you may need to examine yourself and see whether this is good for you or not. Thank the Lord. And when you be real with yourself and you find out that it's not helping you at all, it's time for you to repent of it. Thank the Lord. Thank you to go for the rest of anything else in your life. They especially if it's causing you to stay away from God, it's keeping you out of church, it's keeping you from seeking God. Every time it's time to go to church, it's in the way. They ought to hinder your walk with the Lord. It's causing you to not be on fire like you're supposed to. Then it's time for you to examine that thing to see whether it's either the devil got you doing it or God got you doing it. Thank you, Lord. Especially us saints. Thank you, Lord, because God got a work for us to be doing. And thank you, Lord. We are vessels that's fit for the master's use. Yeah. And if we going out and they got things that's hindering us and stopping us from being used by the master, we ain't got to lay that thing down. Because the God is looking for a soul that he can walk in. He's looking for a soul that he can talk in. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, you got to make yourself available to be used by God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We got to be ready to be used by God. And but the devil got so many distractions. He won't distract us in so many ways. So many things that come out. New song, new movie, new outfit, new this, new that, new this and that. Then you got to unplug yourself from this world. Thank you, Lord. Always something new came out. Did you hear about the new movie? Did you hear about the new book? Did you see the new car? Did you see the new shoe? You see Jordan came out with some new shoe? And the devil got all this going on to keep you busy right there. And you be involved in that just going around chasing what's new until you die and pass out this life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, new tattoo, new haircut, new, new, new. We gotta get back to that old time religion. <laughs> that old time religion. Thank the Lord, my people chasing that un almighty dollar to the grave. Thank the Lord, just chasing the money, chasing the money, and the devil just putting it to the grave, putting it to hell. And people chasing it. Thank the Lord, thank you, Jesus. But your money not gonna be able to save you in that day. Thank you, Lord. Your money is not going to be to buy your way into heaven. Thank you, Lord. Everlasting life is free. You just got to repent and turn to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Peter told Simon, the source of your money going to perish with thee. Thank you, Lord. They ain't preaching out here, man. They only want your money. That's all they want is your money. You can't go to church. When you go to church, you got to have your money ready. You can't go in there without hitting the bank first. Without going to the ATM first. Because they're going to lock the doors on you. And they're going to bring them trash cans out. Thank the Lord. But the Bible say, come ye by. Why the milk without money and without price? You don't need no money. You don't need no bank account. Everlasting life is free. Oh Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I remember I was going to church one time. Then I ain't had no money. Thank you, Jesus. The man had had all the people so bewitched that they had to pay him money. He said, Thank you, Lord. You ain't got no money. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor for some money. And the woman next to me, she saw I ain't had no money. She went in a pocket and gave me some money. I said, Look at this here. 
Like if people put a spell over you, where they feel like you, if you ain't paying your tithe, then you lost. Or you don't, you don't got some money, then you lost. Uh -oh. Oh, no. All they care about is your money. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, we don't preach money. Because Jesus Christ was not preaching money. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ told that rich man, sell what you have and give to the poor. Paul was not preaching no money. Peter was not preaching no money. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was not preaching no money. Thank you, Lord. Because the love of money is the root of all evil. Thank you, Lord. But some people that covered it after they pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Chasing money, chasing money. Thank you, Lord. They didn't commit suicide. You wonder why the rich man still committing suicide. Come on now. Because the money is not filling that void that's missing. The thing of the money is not saving the soul like it needs to. Thank you, Lord. Come on, brother boy. Thank you, Lord. But you are a chosen generation. But you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. A different kind of people. So you're supposed to stand out. You're going to look different. You ain't going to look the same as the world. And if we do look the same as the world, we need to examine ourselves. All right now. Thank you, Jesus. Paul said, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Ain't that right? All right now. No, you are not your own self. Is that what he said? Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Lord. That you should show forth the praises of him. So, thank you, Lord. He did all this for you yeah. and brought you out of darkness. Yeah. And all he did to do may show forth the praises of him. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's all it takes. Thank you, Jesus. That's all it takes. Thank you, Jesus. That's all it takes. Bible says that our most sacrifice of praise unto him can take it. That is the fruit of our lips. Give a thanks to his name. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your truth, Jesus. We thank you for the love and the kindness that you show toward us. We thank you for your truth, Lord. We thank you for keeping us safe, Lord. We thank you for leading us and guiding us, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Bless your mighty name, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We don't want to be no church that don't know how to praise God. Thank you, Lord. Because he said, he did all this that you may show forth the praise of him. Thank you, Lord. One place he said, the people that I created for my own glory, they shall show forth my praises. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That and if we don't fulfill those scriptures, it can't be time out of us. Thank you, Lord. But we fulfill those scriptures. We know how to praise them. <laughs> Lord, now. Thank you, Lord. All right, now. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. All right. You may show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness. Who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Into His marvelous light. Ain't that what we came to? We came to the marvelous light. The Bible says that Jesus Christ came to His own. But let me back up a little bit. The Bible says the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. He said he came to his own, and his own received him not. But, 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 to the men that did receive them, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. Verse 10, let's see what's going on here. Which in time past, we're not a people. So once upon a time, we were not the people of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You got to remember that time when you were not the people of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. One point in time, Paul said, Paul said it's in Ephesians 2. He said, You was without God. Amen. Being alienated from the promise of God. Yes, 
and the covenants of Israel. He said you was lost, you was without God, and you was in the world. Amen. You mean tell me you be in the world without God? Yeah. That's what he feeds it to. And by what about 19 say? You be in that world without God. And the only thing that be keeping you safe is his mercy. You got all these people in the world. They don't have God according to this Bible now. And they be going on and living life and they be thinking they got God. And they say, oh God, thank you God. And they say, oh I like the big man upstairs. And they be calling all these, all these other names. Thank you Lord because they don't know God. But when we came to Jesus Christ, thank you Lord we come to find out that Jesus said, I manifested thy name into the men that thou has given me out of the world. And we learned the Father's name, which is Jesus. We learn the name of our God. Amen. So we don't walk around talking about, oh God, no more. Amen. Thank God, we know to call on Jesus' name. Amen. Because it's the name of the Father. Amen. Thank God, he gave that name to his son to wear down here. That whosoever believeth in him. Thank God, to also get in contact with the Father. Amen. The Bible says, as he had by inheritance, obtained a more excellent name today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You get baptized out there in the title for the Son, Holy Ghost. We know you ain't got no understanding. According to what we did came to, thank you, Lord. If you get baptized in the title for the Son, Holy Ghost, we know you're not reading your Bible. Because the Bible says, line upon line. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. He go a little bit, that go a little bit. And if you just go through a little piece of your Bible and you read a little scripture and think you got to understand it, you might be lost. Uh -huh. You got to go grab another piece uh -huh. and another piece from over here yeah. to try to see what God is really saying. Yeah. Because the Bible says, through thy precepts, I get an understanding. Yeah. Therefore, I hate every false way. Yeah. So there's a false way, ain't it? Yeah. And when you read these precepts, you get an understanding. Yeah. About what God is trying to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And then you better do go by doing things the right way, according to the multiple precepts. Ain't no apostle in this Bible ever baptized in the title Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Never happened. Thank you, Lord. You show that in your Bible, you got a trick Bible. You might have one of these new translations. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We don't believe in too many new translations neither. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We stick to that old King James Version Bible. King James Version. I'm going to get a little bit more this here and I'm going to sit down. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. Which in time past was not a people. But now you are the people of God. And be proud of it. Be, and be proud of this shit. Don't let nobody tell you, thank you, Lord, because you dress different. Thank you, Lord, you look strange. Yeah, I look strange. I'm different from you. You in the world. You serving the devil. I'm serving God. I'm supposed to look different. Thank you, Lord. People try to make you feel crazy for living holy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No, I don't got no TV in my house. No, I don't. Thank you, Jesus. No, I don't listen to the radio. I don't listen to the rap. No, I don't. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you worthy. Bless your name, Lord. You can't allow nobody to make you feel bad for being a child of God. Thank you for now knowing Jesus. Because once upon a time, you was ignorant of God's word. And half of the people, over half of the people, or 99.9% of the people that's condemning you for living righteous, they don't even know they Bible their own self. But they want to condemn, condemn you because you've been reading your Bible and you've stumbled upon something God wanted you to correct. Amen. And so you, well, you, by your faith in God and your love for Jesus, you decide you wanted to correct it. That's right. Amen. So you decide you want to take certain earrings off and thank the Lord, sell a pistol and do all this and that according to what you read. Yeah. And you can't let no devil come and tell you, well, you know you, you ain't got to do all that. Man going to take all that and some. They're going to take all that and some. Thank you, Jesus. Because the devil, thank you, Lord, wants you to conform to this world. 
Because once you conform to this world, the people are not going to be able to see the light that they need to see to come to God. Thank you, because you ain't standing out and doing nothing different from the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We ain't got to bring the people out of darkness, and we got to show them this light that we found, which is in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Brother Morris. Let's get this last little piece. But now ye are the people of God. But now ye are the people of God. Which had not obtained mercy. Which had not obtained mercy. But now have obtained mercy. But now you have obtained mercy. That's it right there. I just want to cut it short and right there. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you. But now you have obtained mercy. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I just sing this song and I'm going to get out the way. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. I've been practicing with my wife a little bit. <laughs> She got it, thank you. I be just trying to catch up, trying to keep up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's one of my favorite songs. Thank you, Jesus. Strengthen my inner man so that I could run stronger. Strengthen.
Thank you so much, Brother Bobby. Thank you, Lord, for our opportunity to glorify the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God bless the scripture in Jesus' name. Shot down everything he was saying mm -hmm. because you teaching them that when they're young. Yeah. You know they had when I was coming up a little boy, yeah. a man was calling his son little man, and he mocked the child by calling him a little man, and he was a baby. Yeah. And he called him until he got up in teenage, to, you know, up in years, he wound up getting in trouble, staying in fights, going. He went to the field. Yeah. Cause he always had that in his mind. He's a little man when he wasn't a man. That's right. You know, that's like right. I said, you put that seed in him. Uh -huh. If you can put a bad seed in him, you can put a good seed in him. Yeah. Man, this was so good. It's no reason. Yes, yeah. I can hold my tears yes, on some of the things I'm saying. Yeah. I'm sitting like that. I have to hold my tears. Yeah. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how y'all live. When I see somebody cry, I'm going to cry too. So I yeah. Amen. That's right. If I see you crying, I don't yeah. know what you're crying for. I'm going to yeah. cry with you. Yeah. I see Daniel yeah. where he got tilled up. I had to stop looking at him. Yeah. He's saying something. He's about to cry. I said, what are you doing over there? He's going to cry? Yeah. I got to start singing this way. Yeah. But I thank the Lord for having yeah. Pastor yeah. Stephen with us this morning. Yeah. Yeah. I thank God for his family. She and his, his mother again. They always got the same sweet spirit every time we see it. Always the same. Every time we see it. And that's what you that's how you want to say. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. What you see today, you're gonna get tomorrow. Amen. And the day after tomorrow. Right. And the day after that. Yeah. All the time. All the time. Yeah. Facebook, we hope y'all learned something today. Thank you, Lord. Brother Steven show, let y'all have it. He, ain't, he didn't hold back. He told you, read your Bible. Thank you, Lord. Continue reading. Because when you see Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that's a title. That's not a name. They have a name. You got to keep reading and find out the name. He said so much, and a lot of our kin folks can't understand that. And they're condemning us for living holy. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Condemning us. They're trying to condemn us. Amen. Because we live in holy, trying to be truthful, trying to be honest with everything. Amen. And they condemn us. Amen. But we have to suffer. We suffer right to say. Amen. Come on. With Jesus. Jesus suffered, so we're going to suffer. Amen. But anyway, Facebook, Facebook, we'll see y'all next time. Y'all be blessed till the next time we'll be on the app. Come on out and be with us. Come on out and be with us. It's more. It's more than what you know about this Bible. That's right. You're going to learn a lot about this Bible. We might have said something the other day that you you didn't understand, but that don't mean that's wrong. It just means that you didn't understand. But you got to get an understanding. The Bible said get with but all God gives you. Get an understanding. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus.